Greetings and salutations everyone and welcome back to Darth Devious Reviews. I am as always Darth Devious. Today, looking at something kind of special, something I really wanted to get. and Probably the only thing from San Diego Comic Con 2015 that I actually wanted. And as you can see, it's their convention exclusive set of Pamela Voorhees and young Jason Voorhees from the first Friday the 13th film. Jason, of course, is wearing a Camp Crystal Lake t-shirt, which is quite silly, but the t-shirt easily comes off so you can depict Jason like he was at the end of the film when he jumped out of the boat for the jump scare, the most famous jump scare ever. And Mrs. Voorhees sitting there looking quite insane. Some more great artwork that comes with these 8-inch Mego style figures that, uh, NECA does. And there's some more pond scum that can go around uh, Jason. His head is just so screwed up. I love it. I love it. Um, Mrs. Voorhees in her sweater. As you can see, there's a shirt sticking out through the collar. I will say that shirt is only goes so far, so I will not be lifting up the sweater to prove it because she does have some quite large molded in breast, so we're not going to show that. Sorry, not that kind of show. On the back here, the Child Jason features removable camp t-shirt and Lake Moss accessories. <clears throat> oh, mom and son, look how nice it is. Mama's special little boy. Camp Crystal Lake has been shuttered for over 20 years due to several vicious and unsolved murders. The camp's new owners and several young counselors are readying the property for reopening despite warnings of a death curse by local residents. It's got a death curse! If you've seen the movie, you know who that is. The curse proves true on Friday the 13th as one by one, each of the counselors is stalked by a violent killer. Very nice. Very, very nice. So, I am going to open this up. Oh, I'm opening up an exclusive set. Yes, I am opening it up because I want it displayed in my display at some point in time. So, I'm going to carefully open this up and get these guys out of the package so we can have a closer look. So, you stay tuned and I'll be right back. Oh, I said it. All right, we're back and I've got Jason and Pamela out of their package and they're looking pretty cool. Um, I've got them on these stands for now. Just them. I'm sure they stand on their own, but I like displaying them on these stands. If you want to know what these stands are, these are Kaiser doll stands. They're fairly cheap on Amazon. Uh, you get like 12 of them for, I think, 15 bucks, something like that. These are for 7 to 9 inch figures. I know Jason's a little small for that, but they're perfect for these Mego figures. They really are. Because um, sometimes NECA doesn't put holes in the feet on them, so you can't put them on regular stands. And I just found they, they stand up better on these stands. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so Kaiser doll stands. Really w good way to display these figures um, and have them still look good. So we'll take a look at Pamela first um, before we get to Jason. I'll put him off to the side. You can see here, I'm going to zoom in on that, that crazy mug of hers. And it does somewhat uh, resemble the now late Betsy Palmer. I'm one person I wish I'd gotten to meet. But uh, sadly, she passed away recently. And you can see here, nice detail all around on her hair. Um, dirty blonde, it looks like. Uh, they probably could have put a little bit more blonde into it and less brown, but what can you do? It's still pretty cool. She's, I got her holding the axe. You can see there's the artwork back there. I like that artwork. You see her holding her axe. Um, they, they give her a knife too. The knife fits nicely in the uh, sheath. So you can unsheath that and take a look at that. It's nicely done. It's getting a little bent because of the stand, but that's okay. I can just move it a little bit. I can move the stand up a little bit and it'll hold her up and it won't impact the knife. But it's got a nice utility belt on her that's holding the uh, sheath for the knife. And the pants on her are just black pants. Boots are really nicely done. Um, there's uh, actual dirt and stuff mold, uh, 
painted onto them, scuff marks, things like that. Really cool. The axe is done nicely. It's got, you know, wood grain painted in. Even up top here, it's got the wood that sticks out of the top there. Nicely done. Clean, non-bloody axe, which is actually weird. Cause most of these accessories that come up Friday the 13th figures have blood all over them. Articulation, heads on a ball joint. She gets some nice movement all around. This is the improved articulation for these Mego style figures. So you do get the bicep swivel. You get the pin and socket hinge shoulders. You got a 90 degree elbow. You've got the wrists rotate and they have the socket right there. The, the, the joint right there. So you can get these in some fairly decent poses. Sometimes a sweater can hinder you, so you got to kind of work with it. But yeah, probably get her to two hand the axe if I if I needed it. There we go. That's probably how she's going to get displayed. And then you know she's got a waist, a waist joint, hips. They go out, they rotate. Ninety at the knee, and then there's you know the up and down on the boot. I don't think Jason has the same level of uh, articulation because he's a smaller figure. There we go. That's right. Get ready to chop somebody's head off. Kill her, mommy. Kill her. That's where get 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 my mama comes from. In case you didn't know. <laughs> so all in all. Really nice figure, really nicely well well done. The sweater's a little bit much. I wish it had been toned down a little bit to look more like that, but still, for a representation of Pamela Voorhees from the first Friday the 13th movie, because right now, between the Mego style figures and the 7-inch figures, I have a representation of Jason and his mother from... The first six movies, other than her severed head. Which, um, maybe in the future there'll be a version somewhere with her severed head. But I mean, I have, she's the killer from the first movie, so I have the killer from the first movie. Have Jason from the jump scare at the, at the end of the set, end of the first movie. But then I have the bag-headed Jason, and part three, part four. I have Roy from part five. I have... Uh, and now, uh, the, vid the review after this will probably be uh, the Part 6 Mego style Jason. So, yeah. And those are all my favorites of the Friday 13th films, except for 5. 5 I'm not too crazy about, but 1 through 4 and 6, to me, is the core of Friday the 13th. The ones that came after are okay. They got a little gimmicky and silly, but the core for me was... Parts 1 through 4, which to me is all like one big story. And then 6 is the continuation, with 5 being the hiccup in the middle. So, stop talking about Pamela. Let's bring in everybody's favorite little camper. And we'll look at Jason. And look at that head, I'm telling you. Look at that thing. And that's um, a pretty good sculpt of the makeup that was on uh, Ari Lerman, or however you pronounce his name. Yeah, he's he he's he's in a band now called First Jason. <laughs> because that's what he was. He was the first Jason. But I mean, just look at that. Just uh, so much detail with all the 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 moss and everything else that's all over him and you know. And and they carried it down throughout his body. I mean, you know, he's got some on his arms. He's got some on his hands. Unfortunately, the skin tone on the arms and legs is different from that on the hands and head, but you know what? I can look past it. You know, his shirt's dirty. His his pants are dirty. It, it goes down to his legs. It's dirty. His feet have some of that moss in his in between his toes. I mean, it's just really, really well done. And yeah, I've got. He's a little too little for that stand, but that's fine. But you know, you see him. His head is on a ball joint as well arms go up oh he does have the swivel he does have the swivel I was not expecting that he has a double elbow oh look at that he's got a little bit more articulation than his mother I was wrong his wrist swivels he does have a waist legs kick up 
they do swivel. Oh, nice. 90 on the on the knee, and the feet pivot back and forth. And like I said, they made this so that this, the shirt can come off easily. You can just come back here. There's a Velcro on it. And this is how, probably how I'm going to display them. I'm going to take the Camp Crystal Lake shirt off. And, you know, you see here, and you see, like, they even did it on his body. He's got the moss and dirt paint all the way up. All the way up. Very nice. Even on his back. And then this, you can just come and just drape it over his shoulder. And there he is. He's, he's ready to jump out of the lake and, and scare that, that one girl. He stands by himself pretty good, too. Look, he's not on the stand. Huh. And uh, Mrs. Voorhees, just because I didn't mention it, she did come with a second hand. Um, I have the one hand on there. It's it, The palm's open a little more. That's for made for holding the axe. If you want her to hold the knife, you put this hand on. But I didn't want her holding the knife. I wanted her holding the axe, so she's holding the axe. Anyway. So, yeah. Let me put him back on his stand. There you go. That is a fantastic set right there. Fantastic. Something really cool that NECA threw together. Um, really nice that they did this for... Uh, I, I wish it wasn't a convention exclusive because it has made it hard for some people to get it. However, however, Toys R Us is also carrying this set. Now, I don't know what how many there are. I know people are still finding them on, sh on shelves at various Toys R Us's across the country. It retails for about 50 bucks. I'm not going to lie, because it's a convention exclusive and there's two figures in it, which I could see. It retails for about 50 bucks. Um, there are places online still selling it. I got this from GoHastings.com. It was $54 plus shipping, which came out to be about 60 bucks. So, if you don't want to go searching Toys R Us constantly, you can try places like that. Try to avoid eBay right now because people are selling it for up, upwards of $100 or more because it's a convention exclusive and you can't get it anywhere else, which right now that's bullcrap because you can, but in a few months you probably won't be able to get it. So yeah, if you want this and you couldn't get it from anybody at San Diego Comic Con or you haven't seen it at Toys R Us, check places like Go Hastings. Um... You might be might get lucky. I know I checked the uh, two days ago. They still had some on there. I don't know what their stock is on them, but they still had some. So yeah, this was the San Diego Comic Con Friday the Thirteenth Part One set of Pamela Voorhees and Jason Voorhees. Um, highly recommended. If you're a fan of the Friday the Thirteenth films, highly highly recommended. You guys be good. I've got the family back together. And you know what these guys do. You know. She's nuts. And he's just will kill you just for looking at him the wrong way. So you better be good. Later.